All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is go ahead and add our virtual axes for our pumps. Now, if you haven't, if you skipped around and you didn't actually watch the last video, please go back and watch the last video because we did a detailed breakdown of why we're doing what we're doing inside of this program. Um, but if you did, let's continue on and go through what we're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and add our virtual axes. And to do this, we need to go into our motion groups and we need to add a new motion group. So if you recall, we're gonna do all three pumps, right? So we talk about all three pumps. We're gonna do uh, pump one, pump one, pump two, two, and pump three. Now these are all gonna be the virtual ax axes that we're gonna be doing. So again, you see I'm continuously adding on to my, uh, basically this simple little spreadsheet or simple little notepad, to be honest with you. Um, but you see I'm continuously adding on to that. So I can actually have a point of reference and also help you understand how we're doing this. So first we're gonna go into motion group, add a new motion group, and we're gonna call this um, motion group. We're just gonna call it very, very, very simple motion group this will create an actual motion group right so in order to do any type of servo motion if you've done any of my servo training you would know that you have to create a motion group now if you haven't done any of my servo training i recommend going through my servo training as well so you get a really 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 fundamental and base understanding about servo controls and you'll really get the best from it i've had some very very um you know, some, some students that go through it that, I mean, have absolutely blown it out the water as far as the progress and how they've actually accelerated their careers just through that, uh, my servo training alone. So when it comes down to it, again, just make your motion group. After you have your motion group, then you can go in and add your next axis. Now in any, uh, any event, this is going to be a virtual axis. So we don't actually have an actual, um, a physical axis we can add to this. So in our trainer currently, we don't have this. We don't have a, you know, three different uh, components. So it's unfair to do one, not the other. I do actually have two servos. I just don't have a third one. So for that case, I'm going to hit and simulating all of them as a default. So you get that base understanding. Keeps the learning simple, easy, and effective. So you're gonna add this uh, virtual axis. We're gonna call this pump one and it's a virtual axis. Then we're gonna add another one, virtual axis. We'll call this pump two, two. And then we're gonna do the last one is going to be pump three. So this is going to be pump three. Now. In this instance, we need to go ahead and come in here and put some um, basic parameters in here. So I wanna go ahead and talk about the way servos are, just for a second. All right, so just, just talk about this motion group. Uh, this is going to be the assigned pumps. Now you can actually remove these if we want to unassign them. And we hit apply, we can unassign that pump if we want to, or that axis in this case. We want to keep all these applied. If you if they're assigned, then they are a working a component of the actual um, programs, and they're a working component of the actual uh, Studio 5000 file, right? So if they're unassigned, they're not working. They won't work. And again, you can't do this. You have to do all of this offline. So just know if you're doing any kind of servo controls, like as far as the fundamentals of laying your foundation, you have to do this offline. The next you would go ahead and talk about the base update rate. This is the update rate of how you would request data from the actual servo. In our case, it's a virtual axis, so we don't really care, but we will keep it as a default at two milliseconds. Okay, so just to give you a base understanding of that's the motion group. Now, in the instance of what we're doing, we're gonna come in here and open up the properties for our pump, and we're gonna to go to our planner, and then we're gonna to come to units, uh, this will be, we'll change our units to, uh, let's just say speed. Uh, actually, this, this is position units, so we'll call this RPM. Okay, so we'll change that uh, as position units to RPMs. Conversions, you can, can change it, conversions if you want to, uh, you know, a linear or a rotary. 
a rotary will actually rot um, you know rotate over it will actually basically you'll have a rollover in that case again uh, not to get too far into servos but again I want to actually give a just a base understanding a rotary will continue to go until the actual motor itself rolls over or the data rolls over the rotary you can set to roll over whatever the counts are for that however however you you do your count conversion so if I did a rotary I would have an unwind constant and or I would have a conversion constant and an unwind constant um, for this matter we're just gonna keep it as a linear it doesn't really matter so um, as far as this goes we're just gonna get a base um, RPM speed as far as this goes so we're gonna come in homing doesn't really we don't really care uh, maximum speed let's just say the maximum speed would be a hundred uh, RPMs uh, let's just say actually 1800 RPMs uh, acceleration you can come in here uh, basically you just put your acceleration or whatever you want acceleration well, we can put um, let's just put it at a thousand and let's put the deceleration at a thousand and then come in here and this would be the jerk which the jerk is basically <clears throat> you can calculate your jerk based upon your right here so you can calculate your, your jerk off of what you already have of your deceleration acceleration which they have a calculate button so if you want to say 50 percent you come in here and do that if you want to say 50 percent again you come in here and do that basically put it in just like that now again we'll keep that at maximum just for the simple fact of it, well I mean it doesn't really matter in, in our case we're not doing any kind of crazy components or anything so uh, we have this set we have our conversion set we have everything set right now uh, let's come into pump 2 do the same exact thing uh, units we're going to change this to RPM and we're going to come in dynamics we're going to call this 1800 RPMs again put uh, the default stuff we put in the other one and come in here and do this again and we'll get calculate 100 percent it's good and again we're just doing this as a really default scenario and again this is the tag that it will make we'll go ahead and talk about the tags here in just a second but uh we want to go ahead and get this conversion constants uh set and all the units and stuff set first so come in here do the dynamics 1800 not thousand, eighteen hundred, one thousand, one thousand, and all I'm doing here is putting in in a virtual axis. You have to put in this data, or else if you do, you try to run, it will not run. It will actually fault out. It give it will give you programming errors, and you will think you're programming it improperly when you're really not. You're really not programming it improperly. So um, this does give us tags that we can go and look at. So if I monitor the axis tags, this will give us tags now that we can actually go in and look at. And these are all axis tags. You can sort these. You can sort these just like just by going like that and find the positions and all this stuff like that. So there's a lot of data here we really, really don't need for what we're doing. Again, this is just a way to simulate our program. All right, I just want to kind of go through and show you that we do get a virtual axis tag structure with this actual um, component that we're adding, right? So again, going back, we're just doing this to give a fundamental overview, just like we talked about. The pumps are going to be virtual axes, and then we do have a physical PowerFlex 525 here with a motor. We're gonna use that for the actual mixer uh, motor, right? So the mixer, the agitator, if you would. So. Um, just just for common knowledge just just so we can simulate everything have a full working program and have everything working together so this is the reason why we're actually converting the pumps into axis uh, our servo axis right so normally again those these would be power flex um but i have seen these where they are servos because it, it really depends on what you're actually doing but in the base in the implementation of like a coca-cola plant or a soda plant or something like that or a pepsi plant 
You would not. You would just have a basic motor uh, and a VFD of that sort. So just so you get a base understanding of how the, how the controls work and stuff of that nature, we're going to go ahead and, you know, go move forth on what we have. So with all that said, we'll continue on to the very next video.